Hello everyone, let's check out this example together. Uh, in this example, as an application on Coulomb's law, uh, we have four charges situated nicely on the corner of a rectangle. There's charge number one, charge number two, charge number three, charge number three, and charge number four, okay? And each charge has a magnitude or a value that is given. Uh, Q number one is six microcoulomb, Charge number two is minus three microcoulomb. Charge number three is seven microcoulomb. And charge number four is five microcoulomb. Micro is 10 to minus six. Uh, okay, and the question is, find the net force on charge number four. So the object of interest for us, or the charge of interest, is charge number four. And I'm going to make it just in red here, just to distinguish it from the other charges, because this is where we need to find the net force on. Okay, so we have three other charges influencing this one. So the idea here is to find the magnitude and the direction of each force from each charge, and then use probably some trigonometry uh, to, to find the net force if needed. Okay? All right, so let's find the force of uh, from charge number one on charge number four, and I'm going to call this one force F1 on four, and Coulomb's law is equal nine times 10 to the power nine, and we can write Q1 times Q4 divided by the distance square, okay? All right, let's now plug in the numbers. 9 comes down as it is, 9 times 10 to the power 9. Q1 is 6 microcoulomb. So I'm going to put that here, 6 times 10 to minus 6 microcoulomb. And this is multiplied by Q4. And Q4 is equal to 5 microcoulomb, perfect, which is 5 times 10 to minus 6, all right? And divided by the distance squared. Well, we're not we are not given actually this distance here, so we need to find this distance. And you can use Pythagorean theorem. I'm gonna call this maybe R1, and R1 is equal to 0.1 square plus 0.2 square. So that's what. 0.1 squared plus 0.2 squared. Since this is Pythagorean theorem, so I'm going to square it here. Okay, and if you if you calculate this one, so 0.2 squared is 0 0.04, and 0.1 squared is 0 0.01. So the whole thing is comes out as 0 0.05 meters. Okay, so that's actually what r squared. We don't need to take the square root for that because we're going to deal only with r squared because the equation here has r squared. All right, so let me plug that in here, 0 0.05. Okay, now with some quick calculations, f1 on 4, remember this here, minus 6 and minus 6 is minus 12. With uh, 10 to the power 9, it becomes all minus 10 to the minus 3. With now, you can use the calculator, and using the calculator, you can find F1 on 4 is equal to 5.4 Newton. Now, there comes what? There comes the direction of that force. Since this is positive, and this is positive, okay, so this charge will push this one on the line that connects between them away from it. That's what where the, the direction of 1 over 4 is, okay? So the direction of this 1 over 4 is going this way, all right? Uh, let's now find the other force, which is F2 on 4. So F2 on 4, we use Coulomb's law, 9 times 10 to the power 9, Q1, now Q2 times Q4, divided by the distance between them, I'm going to call it R2, okay, square, all right, this distance here, okay. 
So that's 9 times 10 to the power 9. Q2 is given to be minus 3 microcoulomb, but we're not going to put the minus. We're just going to reserve that for the direction of the force. So 3 times 10 to minus 6. And the Q4 is same, 5 times 10 to minus 6, same as before. And the distance between them is 0.1 square. Okay? 0.1 squared is 0 0.01. Okay? So you can get that quickly out of the way. Minus 6, minus 6, minus 12 with 10 to the power 9, minus 3. And with some calculation, you can finally find that F2 on 4 is equal to 13.5 Newton. Now let's find the direction. Okay, so this is Q2, as you can see, is negative and Q4 is positive, so they're going to attract each other. So th on this Q4, it's going to move up because we are interested on Q4. Okay, so the force here, I'm going to call this one F2 on 4. Okay, and it's nice to put the direction here just to get it out of the way. And we can go back here and put the direction here, although we have to find out what this angle is later on okay now let's find the final force which is f3 on 4 we can use the same thing 9 times 10 to the power 9 I'm gonna just plug in the numbers quickly so that's q3 instead of q2 q3 is 7 microcoulombs so 7 times 10 to minus 9 and q4 is 5 times 10 to minus 9 and this whole thing divided by r squared. Where is q3? There's q3 and there's q4. So this distance is 0.2. So 0.2 squared. And with some quick calculation, you can find f3 on 4 is equal to 7.86 Newton. And let's find the direction for it. This is positive. q3 is positive, as you can see here. And Q4 is positive, so Q3 is going to push Q4 away. So this way, I'm going to just put this here, one uh, F3 on 4. So it's going to be this way. All right. Now what's left, we found the three forces acting on Q number 4. What's left is actually just to analyze these forces and find the net force acting on Q4. And the way we can do that is that we can draw... Um, an XY coordinate like that and put all the forces on them so this is Q number 4 okay now Q number 4 has three forces F1 on 4 comes this way and the value of it is 5.4 Newton that's the value of F1 on 4 now we need to find this angle that's very important okay how do we find this angle this angle here is the same as this angle here okay if this was 0.1 and this is 0.2 you can use inverse tan so this angle let's call it theta theta is equal to I'm gonna put it here theta is equal to inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent 0.1 over 0.2 okay so doing this calculation here for theta we can find theta is equal to 26 point six degrees so this is the same as this angle which is 26 point six degrees now this force since it's not lying on the X or the Y axis we have to resolve it so we're going to resolve it to the x-axis okay and if we resolve it to the x-axis this value here is equal to 5.4 times cosine so this is 5.4 times cosine 26.6 this is coming from trigonometry please uh, revise that if you need to and if you do this you're gonna do that 5.5 times 5.4 times cosine 26 you will get 
4.83 Newton on this direction. Now you're going to have to resolve this force too on the y axis, the negative y axis here. And you have to do here 5.4 times sine 26.6. And if you do this calculation, this force here would be equal to, I'm going to call it F uh, Y, and this is going to be equal to 2.4 Newton. Okay? All right, now this is one force that we found, and we resolved it on the X and the Y axis. Um, once you do this, actually, you don't need that anymore. You don't need, so I'm going to delete that. You don't need this anymore because you already resolved the force into the x and the y axis. You don't need that anymore. All right. So now let's resolve the other forces, which is, or we let's let's put the other forces. Maybe we don't need to resolve them. F two four is actually thirteen newton, and it's going all the way up here, as you can see, and that's thirteen point. 5 Newton and it's on the y-axis so we don't need to resolve that that's that's actually gonna make our lives much easier and F uh, the last one is uh, F3 on 4 F3 on 4 is going this way as you can see so this should be here I'm gonna put it in the white so that we can actually distinguish it here there it is and F3 on 4 is 7.86. It should be a little bit longer because this is 4 and this is 7. So I'm going to put it all the way longer as a bigger force. Okay? So that's Newton. So totally, on this x-axis, as you can see, on this x-axis, we have 7.86 plus 4.83. So if I do this calculation... I get this for on the x-axis here this whole th force comes down as 12.7 Newton and look we have a force here 13.5 Newton and this one is 2.4 Newton so this one is positive this one is negative if you add them together so we have to say 13.5 minus 2.4 and this will give us you know a force that is going up here that is all equal to 13.5 minus 2.4 so what is that 11.1 .1. so that force is 11.1 Newton good so we, we we got rid of this one and we only have this one here and we got rid of this one okay these are the only two forces that are uh, remaining from all of these forces so we just uh, resolve them down to these two forces and as you can see there's 12.7 Newton this way to the positive x-axis and 11.11 .11 to the positive y-axis so the resultant force were or the net force so F net must come somewhere in between them with an angle here theta and we need to find F net and we need to find what the angle theta okay so let's do that F net basically is Pythagorean theorem which is equal to 12.7 square plus 11.1 .1 square all under square root and if you make this calculation you will be able to find that the net force is equal to 16.87 Newton now if you want to find theta uh, you can use the tan inverse again. So this this here is equal to 11.1 .1 Newton. Tan inverse of theta is equal to 11.1 .1 divided by 12.7. Find the value of that and take the inverse of this value and you can find that theta, which is the direction, is equal to, let me just write this down, tan inverse of 11.1 .1 over 12.7 and if you do that okay you are going to find that theta is equal to 41 degrees and that's it so you found the net force and you find 
you found theta. And that's it for this problem. Thank you.